All right, welcome to the Jimmy Curve, everybody. My name is Jimmy Putnam, the host of the Jimmy Curve. I, I can't see the board when I'm facing this direction. I, I've rearranged our, uh, our our viewing situation. Normally, I'm staring at my screen. Now it's behind me. I didn't realize how awkward that would be. And welcome to you too. Uh, with me, <laughs> with me are my co-hosts Joshua Vassaler. Hello, everybody. And William Doherty. That's the person I am. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'd like to start off by thanking everybody for listening. Uh, we had almost a hundred downloads last episode, which b- blows me away. I'm very excited about it, and yay! I yay claps. Yay! So uh, thanks a lot, everybody, and please, 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 to support the show, if you like it, all you have to do is just tell tell a friend by uh, retweeting our tweets when we tweet out our, the links to our episode, you know, or tell somebody to like our Facebook page. That's all you got to do. You don't have to send us money. Please don't send us money. Please stop sending us money. It's a lot of extra paperwork when tax season rolls around. I don't know how to file it. Do not listen to Jimmy. <laughs> Send me the money. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, just yeah, just tell somebody. You re- retweet us. That's all you need to do. Uh, we would we would really appreciate it. So uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, so now what I'd like to do is get to our plugs segment for the week, where we plug everyone who. Asked who sent us an email and asked us to plug them, or uh, you know, or send send us a tweet with the hashtag plug me Jimmy, uh, and I'll go ahead and hit hit our our plug me drop. It's your plug, and the plugs this week are any anything, any. I don't know. We could plug none. We could plug Duffy's, I guess. No, <laughs> no I don't, don't want to. No plugs this week, you know, guys. You could, I, just, no. I, brought this, I did this segment to be sad. No, you can, you can plug Dugans, which we're missing right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that suggestion came from our very special guest this week, uh, one local stand-up comedian and very good friend of mine, Ryan Dowd. Ooh, I'm a very good friend. You guys, yeah, it's a special. You're, you're. I, I almost said special friend, but that would be insulting and no, or that's, weird. That's more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan, what do we need to know about you? Um, I'm really white and skinny. Like you guys already Correct. brought this up. Like I, I, I listened to the Dusty. I was the yeah. first person mentioned that like wasn't on the podcast, and it was with derision that I would be having <laughs> lots of pizzas and delivering them. We used you as an example of a person who would not intimidate a, a rowdy customer. No. <laughs> I have delivered pizzas and I do not intimidate anyone. I don't think I... Mm. I probably intimidated, like, kindergartners when I used to wrestle them mm. when I was, like, a fifth grader. And that's, like, actually a true <laughs> statement. <laughs> so I I was the scourge of those motherfuckers, but... Uh. yeah. See, that that's that that, en- that encapsulates a, a lot of personality traits actually in a in a nutshell right there. See, that's what people think that like big muscular people are the ones who are scary, but to me like it's the Ryan Dowds of the world <laughs> who really have like that far away like thousand yard stare of someone who could really commit an atrocity. <laughs> like <laughs> right, yeah. You know, that's that's where my fear lies. In fact, Ryan, don't you describe your face during stand up as uh uh Something insulting to yourself. Oh, no, of course. I am assuming that, I, actually, I usually say something like, uh, that, no, I don't know if you're talking about, like, when I'm on doing stand-up, but, the uh, like, just that my face always, oh, like, people say, oh, what's wrong? I was like, oh, nothing, my emotions are just taking over my face. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. So, uh, Ryan Dowd, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve. We're happy to have you. Uh, the big news uh, today, October 15th, when we're recording this, Wednesday, October 15th, uh, the Kansas City Royals made the World Series. I know that two out of my two co-hosts don't really have a lot to say about this, but it needs to be discussed because this is a super interesting thing for two reasons. Number, Well, for three reasons, actually. The first is that I grew up a Kansas City Royals fan, and then I stopped watching baseball. I, I at first I stopped watching the Royals and became a Cubs fan, and then I stopped watching baseball entirely because the Kansas the Cubs City will do that to you, right? <laughs> Makes sense. Even before the Cubs, though, the Kansas City Royals were 
terrible for almost 30 years. And there wasn't even a year in that 29-year stretch where they were kind of good but barely missed it. Like, they were one of the three worst teams, not in baseball, in sports for 29 years. They never made the playoffs till this year since the last time they won the World Series. Yeah, it was the longest drought of any professional team making the playoffs. And now they have won eight consecutive playoff games to make it to the World Series, which is a record, is an all-time <laughs> record for consecutive playoff wins. Uh, and by the way, this whole streak of being terrible didn't sort of start to get better gradually over time. They were terrible last year. <laughs> They've been terrible all the So this is the other reason why it's interesting. Feel free to throw this some... I, I, I have no context for this, but this seems like it must be one of those things that's like going to become a sports conspiracy later on. <laughs> like, it's one of those things where it's like, like a no mate, like, like, like somebody, like some multi billionaire lost a bet and now, like, a non major market team had to go to the World Series. This year. <laughs> right. Like, George Steinbrenner's <laughs> kids, like, made some bad investments and, like,. Whatever Sears owns part of the Royals or something, and now I don't know. I just can't wait for the Disney movie, the 2014 <laughs> oh, right movie. Uh, religion will be involved somehow. Mm, yeah, well, yeah. Royals in the <laughs> outfield. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Angels still win the World Series, just helped by the Royals, right? Magically. Um, but here's the other reason why it's actually super interesting. So, I don't know when this book came out. Somebody, somebody can look it up if they want. I don't. It doesn't really matter, but. 15 years ago, or thereabouts, 20 years ago, a book called Moneyball was written. It was written about the Oakland A's. It's probably the most important sports book ever written, uh, the most important book about sports. It completely turned baseball on its head. Uh, it, it fundamentally changed the way that everyone involved in the sport views baseball. Uh, views that people had held for 110 years suddenly went away, for this new version of putting together a team, analyzing stats, determining how you put together a team and win um, and build a roster. And since that book came out and everyone accepted it, uh, first of all, the, the reason it's the most interesting is because it proved once and for all that the players of the sport don't know as much about it as stats nerds, which uh, made me <laughs> extremely happy. Like. Uh, basketball and football have not caught up to this yet, but at a certain point, they're going to have to acknowledge that people who play fantasy football know more about football than the players. That's... <laughs> Jimmy, that... <laughs> but the Royals prove you wrong. And that's why it's interesting, <laughs> because the Royals do everything wrong. Ever since this sort of new version of the game took over, the uh, it's all any team has ever tried to do. The Kansas City Royals are completely the opposite. Sabermetrics, which is the the word uh, that the, that's the statistical system that a guy named Bill James invented to analyze baseball, says things like, "You should never steal bases. The risk is not worth the reward." Well, the Royals steal bases all the time. Another thing he sort of statistically established is things like, over the long over the course of a season, defense really doesn't matter. Well, the Royals have a huge emphasis on defense. Like they play great defense. They steal bases. It's, uh, it's something called small ball. It involves things like bunting and sacrificing, which sabermetrics say you should never do. Uh, the, most f the, the most important part uh, to success in baseball, according to sabermetrics, is power hitting, which the Royals do almost none of. Like, they're, they have no power in their lineup. It's just, it's a complete anomaly, and it's very exciting. So, I mean, but if... But if what you're saying is that, like, the Royals do the opposite of everything that is the new conventional wisdom. Is that the thing that, like, propelled them to this incredible sudden success? Like, is it the game that, like, changed around them? Like, it's right. referred to as, like, the meta game. What, right. is the, what is the environment that they're playing in like? Well, people are going to be talking about why this is happening for a long time. It, no one really has a definitive answer. But I do. Go ahead. <laughs> Write it down. Throw it out there. The jocks were right. They're better at sports than nerds. <laughs> <laughs> well, what conventional wisdom really suggests is that in a small sample size, in a, which, which in baseball, anything less than like 30 or 40 games would be considered a tiny sample size. So for the eight games in a row that the Royals have won, 
none of those statistics really matter. And all of the Sabre metrics are based on things that happen over 162 games. Like if you never, if you never uh, steal bases, that will equal this many wins over 162 games. But in a one game sample size, it's it really just comes down to individual plays and a lot of luck. Yeah. So the whole that, thing is coin tosses. It's like right. there's like a statistics professors that'll have an assignment and be like, "Okay, I'm going to give some of you an assignment to uh actually flip a coin 100 times and write it down and then other people can make it up and then they turn it in and he can tell exactly who would who was the one that right. actually flipped it cuz you get 10 heads in a row <laughs> and people that are writing it out was like that doesn't sound right. I'm not going to do that <laughs> because that the shit happens. And well there's a thing in baseball called the Voris McCracken effect which essentially says that when a batted baseball is put into play, whether it goes for a hit or an out is essentially random chance. It has almost nothing to do with the batter, which is why batting average is not a great um, statistical measure of the quality of a hitter. But in one game, if a hitter just hits a little bloop that lands in for a single, that makes a huge impact. So, th but it's but it's still just random chance. It's just that no team has ever been able to sort of do this for eight games in a row before. I I think as interesting as those things are, I'm still not interested in baseball. <laughs> like <laughs> the thing is, and like it's really trendy right now to like the Kansas City Royals. Right, like yeah. that's that's everybody who's like never talks about baseball is like on the bandwagon for Kansas City Royals, which I don't know. It seems like. It does. It doesn't seem sincere. Everyone likes losers now. Like, yeah. Once, a, oh my God, they're winners now. I've always liked them. And there's also a whole thing like Alex Gordon, like went to the university, so like locally, right? That's a thing. Well, it's like, is it? Is there that many Kansas City Royals fans, and they just been doing horrible for so long? They they haven't been talking no about they, it, they, or they it's they just like, oh, it's this is the it's thing not like to the like. Cubs. They don't have like just a bunch of people that sell them out all the time. Right. It's it's, it's people that are all bandwagoning. Now. Kansas City is a good sports town. It's just that no sports town can survive a team that is that bad for that long. It's impossible. <laughs> like one of the well, the, the the principles of Moneyball were really not even about winning at baseball. It was about getting people to come to games because that was what the Oakland A's were trying to do, and that was the focus of the the book, which was owners do all these kinds of crazy promotions to draw fans, and what. What the first thing they statistically proved was that attendance at games is 100% directly correlated to wins and losses. Like, if you win, people will come. If you don't, they won't. I and don't that's know. true of almost anything but the Cubs. Kansas City has a thing called Bark at the Park where you can bring your dog to the park. <laughs> so you can have, like, a, one of the worst. a dog fight at a baseball game. Michael that would Vick be would more entertaining that. than the baseball <laughs> game. <laughs> it would. Uh, what, actually, the... Uh, I can't remember where it was. One time there was a man versus food that took place at a baseball park. If you guys ever seen man, like the guy goes around, does eating challenges. Yeah. And he, there was a challenge where he had to eat this, uh, this huge amount of food and he had to finish it by the seventh inning stretch, I think, uh, which I thought was super fun. And I've always wanted to go find that. It was like a minor league game, but if it involves eating a bunch of food to win a prize, I'm in. They used to do that at the when they had the horse racing track here in Lincoln. They had it. Yeah. They they I my ex brother in law like tried to eat a Navajo taco and failed <laughs> miserably. <laughs> and it was like they had cameras in his face and it was like on the screens everywhere. It was great. <laughs> is there anything? Is there anything more satisfying than someone else's failure on a jumbotron? <laughs> <laughs> Very few. Uh, the, yeah, and I, I'm assuming you're specifically referring to the times on a jumbotron when there's like a rejected wedding proposal, marriage <laughs> oh, proposal. Right. Like Shit. that is that is the greatest moment of human failure <laughs> <laughs> ever when that happens. And I, with sick pleasure, watch them all the time on YouTube. And they sh it, they never show all the married guys that are actually just like, why didn't that happen to me? Years ago? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to our second and most important topic of the 
Did, was that too weird of a transition? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, everyone's staring at me. Uh, yeah, no, no. I don't, we're we're leaving this in. It doesn't matter. No, I think it was. I think it was flawless until you mentioned <laughs> that. <laughs> until you started talking about it, you were it. like, "Hey, look behind the curtain, everybody." <laughs> <laughs> I did kind of. I did kind of give away our our Jimmy Curve magic secrets. Can uh, I show you my wizard? <laughs> Let's take another break. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the most important question I wanted to ask this episode. Is a piano a piece of furniture? Let me give this some context. I was playing a board game uh, over the weekend, and we were, it was a, it, it, the game was essentially a version of 20 questions. And... Uh, it, it was, it was announced to me by my friend Justin that he hated playing this game because there would always be specific arguments or arguments over specifics about questions. And the first topic was, uh, the, the word was, uh, piano and Dusty Stell asked, am I a piece of furniture? I said, no, Justin said, yes. We then argued about it for a half an hour <laughs> Until I threw a huge fit and quit the game. Now, here's the most important part of that. In no way is a piano a piece of furniture. And <laughs> this is really a story about Jimmy's anger. It really is. <laughs> but if you guys can convince me that a piano is a piece of furniture, I'm all ears. But here's the problem. You can't because it is very clearly not. Uh, I think Justin was just trying to do a bit and start trouble but I got legitimately mad because that's what I do when I'm playing games because I'm very competitive even when it doesn't matter. But uh, if if I put a piano in front of you, this is also, by the way, why I like hosting my own podcast is because I can just present my side of old arguments and no one can argue against me, except that I've brought you three in to do just that. What if I only use the quote-unquote piano no, it's it's just to, a piano. It's not a let me finish. <laughs> to sit or lay on. Let's just say typically sit on, and I call it a chairano. <laughs> uh, does it still function as a piano? No. Or if you if you, have I, you I don't know. Never so, never so now open the lid. So now it's not a piano. Now I, you now you've taken a piano and just made it a chair. Mm -hmm. So that so it's not even a piano anymore. The question is: Is a piano a piece of furniture? The thing I, is, I, what is furniture? You're asking the wrong question. It, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. F furniture is like porn. I can't describe it, but I know what it is. But an ottoman, like or like so like a chest of drawers, is furniture. You don't sit on it. It doesn't have the purpose of being something that you sit on. The, so the most important part of the the argument is that if I show you a piano and I say, "What is this?" Are you flipping me off, or are you just scratching yourself? <laughs> no, I'm just I'm I'm just listening. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if that was just like a very subtle so, way of no, being no, like, no. here Jimmy goes again talking about pianos. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, no, if I show you you a piano and say, what is this? Furniture would not come up. You would no 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 person would be like, oh, that's a piece of furniture. You would say that's a musical instrument. Depending on what kind of piano it is, you might say it's an antique or a decoration, but it, it's not a piece of furniture. I, it's it's the, in the context of the game. Twenty questions. If someone asks, "Am I a piece of furniture?" You have to stop to consider it, though. Like technicalities. Like I, like I wouldn't say a flat yes, but I would say yes. Cut like probably questionable interpretation. Well, you would be wrong because it's a like, piano and it's not a piece of furniture. Right, but what, but like, on, on, okay, go ahead. But getting back to Ryan's point, how do you define furniture in a way that doesn't include piano? Because you weren't really like you just kind of played it off as if, but like a giant grand piano, like can you buy a piano at a furniture store? Possibly, I don't know. No, I of course not. you can't. <laughs> you can't buy a guitar at a furniture store. No, it's a musical instrument. You buy a piano at a musical instrument store. Yeah, um, the thing is, though, like, okay, Kesha, she's in the music industry, <laughs> correct? Is I don't she, know where you're going, but she, I'm along for the ride. Is she a musician? No, she's, she's a, a she's a whore. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say she's a performer, but okay. okay. That is a type of whore. Yes, yeah, she is a whore and not a musician, 
fair enough. I'm I'm 100 percent with you. Right. So it's but they uh, she is in the music industry. Right. So though a piano is an instrument, it can be used as a piece of furniture. You know what? Let's let's play this out because I want to see how this goes. We're gonna we're gonna play we're gonna do a quick recreation of a fictional game of twenty questions. I will be asking the questions, uh, and the card that I'm holding over my head that I cannot see is Kesha. Uh, Joshua, you are trying to help me. Will, you are trying to you are playing against me, and Ryan, you are just causing trouble. Okay. All right. Am I a piece of furniture, Joshua? You, uh, no. Will. I mean, I would sit on it. <laughs> Ryan. What is furniture? Aren't we all furniture? Oh. Isn't everything furniture? Excellent. Am I a musician? Joshua. No. Will. I mean... <sighs> is Shakespeare a poet? <laughs> <laughs> Would be the answer to fuck with me, I'm assuming. No? Yeah. Correct. Okay, Ryan. The best. <laughs> uh, am I Kesha? Joshua. Yes. Will. You wish. <laughs> Ryan. Aren't we all cash out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And scene. Thank you. That was, that was, I, I think we've all answered, I think we've answered my question. A piano is not furniture. Now, dictionary.com says <laughs> the definition of furniture is the movable articles as tables, chairs, desks, or cabinets required for use or ornament in a house, office, or the like. That would be that a piano is furniture. Well, that was Justin Johnson's argument, which is that a piano is furniture because you need furniture movers to move it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> That's a terrible That's argument. That's like a philosophy 101 <laughs> argument. <laughs> <laughs> I hated it so much. Uh, I I still don't agree, but uh, in my defense, I'm only not agreeing because it's wrong. Uh, <laughs> but it did, it did make me think of all of the times in my life where... Uh, a, a board game has turned heated because because of my personality, that happens a lot. Jimmy, let me ask you a question. Fire away. Are spoons Not musical? Not just fire. Is a spoon a musical instrument? Uh, ooh. <laughs> you just blew my mind, William Doherty. <laughs> <laughs> they can be. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> the answer to that question is sometimes. <laughs> Case closed. Oh boy. Uh yeah, it's like that by that argument though, aren't isn't a spoon also drugs? Your 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 answer should have been we're talking about board games now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it did make me think, like, of all the times where I got angry playing board games. Does that ever happen? To, is it just, is it, here's, I guess here's my question. Here. Is it just me that that happens to all the time? All the time? Yes. <laughs> uh, sometimes, no. Like, I've had that argument on many occasions, but it was usually about a D&D &D game and the death, like, and how we define, like, what move does what and why. Yeah, D&D &D lends itself to that. Yeah, that's like the fun part of D&D. <laughs> I don't know about that. We had that argument a lot of the times over video games, too. Like, when a new video game would come out, like, we used to play a lot of fighting games in college. We'd, we'd drink and we'd play Soul Calibur. And there were occasional, there was the occasional character who's just a little overpowered. And that was enough that we had to declare that character unplayable, <laughs> which is basically our way of saying, you're just better than me, so you can't use your best character. <laughs> you know, but that's... My, my thing, my, my favorite thing about, like, traditional games is making it into, like, an adult drinking game. Like, <laughs> like uh, what's that, the one with the, you build the blocks and you knock them over? Jenga. Jenga, Jenga. yeah. They, they make, like, they, they do that with big blocks. I've been at bars where they play that, and then there's always the guy that gets so drunk, he's like, Godzilla, and he just comes <laughs> in and he knocks over the whole thing. Like, that's really fun. Why don't we do that with more games? Oh, there's, oh. there's the shot chess and shot checkers. Yeah, but, All like, right. what's funny about drinking Jenga is that drinking directly inhibits the one motor skill you need to play Jenga, <laughs> which is having a steady hand. Right, yeah. Uh, and, and for me, there's a, there's a, there's a peak where like two drinks steadies my hand a little bit and then it gets worse. Like I'm a better pool shot two beers in, but you know, four beers in, I'm certainly not. 
Uh, but we were talking about Jenga, and once again, I made it all about me. Sorry, guys. I was talking about like what other what other games, like board games or traditional games, can you just make bigger and make more fun when you drink? Well, we always used uh, to play. All of them? <laughs> we always used in my in my dorm in college. We used to play a version of Monopoly that got really complicated and always just ended in everyone tying because we would do things where it was like. Okay, I'll trade you my railroad so you can have the set of four, but you need to give me 25% of the profits on the yellow spaces. And after like a ke- after like half a keg of beer and 28 turns, everyone just owned a part of everything and there were like Wait. spreadsheets that we'd get lost this in. This sounds just- like the 2008 financial crash in Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what happened. Shit got too real, Ryan. It got too real. Got real, has, real. <laughs> has anyone at this table played Settlers of Catan? I have. I've heard. Oh, I've, I've. I've. I've heard about it a lot. I've never played. Tell me about you it. You should play it. Well, okay, so Settlers of Catan is like this gradual building game where you accumulate resources. You use that to like build on this like um, changeable board. Uh, and so you. D- it's just a gradual build up to try to get the enough points to win. Um, but there's like roads connecting settlements, and uh, my uh, lovely wife and like that whole friend group consistently plays a version the of smart, Settlers the smart, of Catan. The smart and beautiful Serenity Doherty. Yes. Let's give her a shout out. I mean, I'm not going to be that nice to her because I'm uncomfortable with people knowing that I'm happy in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she's not completely useless to you. Uh, no, I mean, she makes more money than I do. Right. Uh, no, but they play a version of this Settlers of Catan where, like, they will dole out shots for small advantages in the game. Oh. With the obvious drawback that from that point on, you're drunker, so you're probably a little worse. Yeah, it's its own reward and penalty. It is. Wait, mm-hmm. how many uh, shots for ore? How many shots? Oh, no. It's oh, okay. the way they, I think, like, there. there's a couple, I don't know their rules entirely, but, like, one of them is, like, you can change the location of one road on the map for one shot. Oh. Uh, wow. I don't know what else, I don't know what other there's, but, like, their rule is that, like, someone else gets to prepare the shot and they can make it with any liquid in the kitchen. Ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> so, they, they they've also done, like, you know, half vodka, half soy sauce shots and shit. Oh. <laughs> As very disgusting. As <laughs> uh, so, does anyone else have a story? Did I do a weird transition again? <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a weird transition. That's disgusting. That one was. When you try to make it, when you try to make it natural, it's like just drops into the uncanny valley. (laughs) You tried to make it real, but now it's just this grotesque approximation of human. Am I making it super weird, or is it that you three are all just staring at me as I'm trying to make it normal that is making it super weird? Is it the chicken or the egg here? Is it the the weirdness chicken or the weirdness egg? Correct. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Uh, Ryan has a story about games. Well, I have a story about video games, uh, and it, I think it it speaks to one of your points earlier. I remember thinking I was the shit about video games when I was a little kid, mm-hmm. and uh, I went to an arcade that was by, uh, my parents had a timeshare in a condo, and there's mm-hmm. this arcade section, and I was like, somebody play with me! And my dad's like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. That is a spot-on young Ryan you, Dowd it impression. Is. You I were, am the best at doing an impression of myself. You were 19 years old at the time. Yes, it's true. <laughs> and I was like, please, come on. And my dad's like, oh, God, okay, whatever. And he, he it's um, Street Fighter 2. How, how old were you? Oh, God, I have no fucking idea. Is Street Fighter 2 the game where you could just be M. Bison and fly across the screen? And yeah, yeah that's, okay. that's the one. And so I... Uh, well, actually, Eb Bison was a boss character in the original Street Fighter 2. It wasn't until later releases where those characters were actually made playable. <laughs> Goddamn nerds! <laughs> Point made. Game, set, match, Doherty. Jesus. Well, well, it's, 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 sorry, Ryan, this is why Will's on the show. Okay, but uh, I, 
I don't remember what character I played, but my dad played a character called E Honda, and mm-hmm. yes. Will will verify and that then, as a character. And then Ryan pointed at me because, like E Honda, who is the sumo wrestler, I'm also a fat white. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. And uh, he, what he decided to do was just like smash the buttons, and yeah. he beat the shit out of me. That is an excellent strategy with E Honda because E Honda has a special move called the hundred hand slap. Exactly. Just his hand just goes up and down, and he just destroyed me, and I felt I, I remember the rage. It was the first time, like, a tsunami of rage just entered inside of me and came out and was like, that's bullshit! You were just button mashing! <laughs> I didn't know what button mashing was, but I, I said it that day. F- fantastic. <laughs> uh, anybody else have an angry board game story before we move on? Yes, I, I take issue with categories. I've gotten in arguments before. Remind me which game that is. That's the one where you roll the die with uh, with all the letters on it. And it, right, a letter okay. comes up and then you have a list and you it has to start with the same letter. Yeah, that game also, I can see that game getting heated. Well, the problem is you play that- with... That is the game I was expecting when you said you got into an argument about whether or not a piano was furniture. Oh, okay, <laughs> Because yeah. that's what it should be. Like, <laughs> yeah. I need furniture that starts with P. Exactly. Right. It's stuff like that. <laughs> or it's like if, uh, you know, if it's B, if it's, uh, or if it's like um, something where they just, like, add a color because it's the letters R. Right. So, like. Red chair. Yeah, something that flies in the sky. Somebody's like, a red kite. <laughs> right. Yeah, that doesn't. You can't do. No, that. that's no, that's. But that, but that's a very clearly a wrong answer. And someone arguing that it's a correct answer is just very clearly wrong. I I, I agree, but I, I played with a particular person who always did that all the time, <laughs> and you she would you would just give her points because it's like not worth arguing about. <sighs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, board games get exhausting like that. Uh, especially when drinking is involved. Oh, that's how other people feel about it? Because, like I said, <laughs> that's supposed to be the fun part of board games, I thought. Especially categories. The funnest part about categories is coming up with something stupid and then seeing <laughs> if you can convince other people to agree. See, this is the thing. I, I, a lot of friends I have from college and like who are still living in the Kansas City area are very hardcore like gamers. Very into board games, very into tabletop top gaming, role playing games, all that stuff. And they definitely carry an attitude with them where part of the game is arguing about the rules. And uh that attitude has carried over into our fantasy football league, for example, where <laughs> all through the, like the last 3 seasons in between every week of games, there was just 4 days on Facebook of long threads arguing over the rules. Uh you know, well I would just scream, why are we arguing over the rules? And then I was the bad guy. It's that concept of house rules, bro. House <laughs> rules. <laughs> I don't know that concept. That's well, it's like a... house rules. This is the way we've always played it. You what? know, we That's... have we have our own way of playing a certain game. Yeah, do you think Vegas argues the rules with people? <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> but that's like my whole, my fundamental view of life is like, do the best you can within the certain rules set. I don't like people who argue that we should change a law to make it life easier for them you know there are things that are certainly fundamentally unfair that need to be addressed like you know uh certainly everyone should have the right to vote and all that kind of stuff but i, I i'm mostly talking about like tax laws and stuff like everybody thinks that they should pay less taxes and everyone else should pay more you know instead of just trying to succeed <laughs> so as the one percent you really feel like you shouldn't be paying as so many taxes <sighs> is what you're trying to say jimmy they go, coming after me again for that sorry uh <laughs> For our listeners, Will thinks everybody who has pants without holes in them is in the one percent. So, <laughs> but not really. I, I'm, I've decided I'm no longer going to take offense at that. <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> oh, I gosh. almost killed Will. With yeah, that. it was very funny. <laughs> Oh. I was like, I thought, is this it? Is this, <laughs> is this when Will's going to fall over dead? <laughs> All right. Any any any, any rebuttal? I don't even remember what we were arguing about. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's do some news. Should we talk about? I was I was just going to say that these pants don't have any holes in them, but I remembered that they do because it's in the pockets because my change <laughs> keeps falling out. <laughs> the ultimate expression of poverty: change, change slipping through your pockets. All right, 
Let's uh, let's do a couple of news stories with uh, Joshua Vossler. Joshua. Joshua. Joshua Vossler News. Hello, everybody. HBO in 2015 is going to be streaming, and you don't have to have a cable or satellite provider. Okay, so wait. Oh, finally, real sex all the time. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything less erotic than real sex? Um. Yes, your grandparents fucking in front of you. Mm, I would argue <laughs> that one, but that's for personal reasons. Uh, okay. Wait, now, like I actually currently have HBO, being in the one percent of uh, <laughs> pants with no holes in them. Correct. Does that go away? Do I not like? Will that? Will you not have that, or would it be useless? Or well, what? that's that's the interesting thing that they're they're kind of like well. You know, HBO's kind of catching up with Netflix and Hulu and YouTube and stuff where, uh, you know, it's it's cheaper to to get that service. Yeah, I think eventually I think it, it's all going to go to that. It's all going to just be Internet based. There's not going to be cable or satellite anymore. At what point? This is my specific question. <clears throat> at what point do jack booted government thugs kick in my front door and arrest me? for giving out my HBO Go password to, like, all of my friends. Well, Jimmy. Like, how much time? They thought it come for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've infiltrated our friends. <laughs> Wait, why are they German? <laughs> <laughs> you said jackbooted thugs. Oh, yeah. Is I, I don't know what that term means, to be honest. <laughs> well, really? Because I... you're a Jew. <laughs> quote, unquote. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, I, yeah, it's... I am a quote unquote Jew. Like I am technically a Jew, but not really. I just had a like a a great idea for a future movie. It's the Jimmy List, and it's everybody <laughs> that Jimmy let have his HBO Go. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's it's like it's like it's like Munich, where uh, Eric Bana's just hunting down the people I've given out my list to. Yes. Right. Well, I mean, like Netflix right now. I mean, they they make a lot of money, and everybody shares their username and passwords for that. Now, this this is a new thing for me. I didn't realize that like Netflix was something that you could share with other people, but that's common? Well, yeah, it's just a username and password. It's yeah. five devices, though. It's ah. up to five devices, yeah. yeah. Yes, which HBO does the same thing, right? Uh, I think they don't care. Oh, they don't. As of it's now. like they're going to change the model if they're doing that, though. Netflix yeah. does not limit you to five devices. That's what they say. I have more than five devices that I own that can play Netflix. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Like my phone, my wife's phone, my 3ds, my wife's 3ds, like four different video game consoles, and they all like are usable on Netflix. Oh, who's it's the one person? Jesus <laughs> Christ, you fucking hoarder! <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Tell us about how many 3DSs you have, rich guy. That's, yeah. that's, not, that's not a major wealth. Uh, Two. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is interesting, though, because a good, like, HBO did sort of lead the, the serial television revolution of, hey, like, these, sh like, TV shows can be good. You right, know? and I think I think one of the reasons too is like they're like, oh shit, because Netflix comes out is coming out with original uh, shows that are really good. Yeah, and and you know they they're competing against each other. So HBO is like, all right, well we need to have a streaming service, a standalone yeah, every, streaming service. Everybody's doing that. Yeah, like uh, Amazon is coming out with their own original content, and rightly so. I mean, you're going to be able to get what you want. Then I mean, cable and satellite, you the vast majority of what you're paying for, you're not watching. Because it sucks. Right. Josh, you're just so wrong. When Comcast merges with Time Warner, all will be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's in the 1% now? I don't know. That even, that doesn't even have anything to do with it. Still Jimmy. Right. It's, still, it's, it's still me. It's still me, guys. All right, let's do another story. All right. Um, the Let's see here. Uh, science. Oh, uh, that still exists. Science is a uh, is ha big comeback, right? <laughs> science. Um, I think it's fair to say that I fucking love science. Yeah, isn't that a web? So science? is yeah. yeah it's I know nothing. Science fiction becoming science nonfiction. Ooh, yes. Now I'm on board with this. NASA, uh, about twelve uh, months ago, did uh, was studying a way to. Uh, 
induce long-term sleeping up to six months mm. the, in, in the in the idea that eventually uh, f- like to travel to Mars people can just like sleep right and yeah. they do it by sticking a tube down your up your nose into your I don't like cavity. I'm, un- I'm uncomfortable. With- <clears throat> and and they, uh, that's, this took a turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they pump in cool air, right? Which lowers your temp, your body temperature by 10 degrees, right? And then they also dope you up to, to prevent you from like shivering and g- becoming hypothermic. Right. But that you're supposed to do that for six months, apparently, and you're going to be able to get to Mars. My, my thing about this is. Is I want that on my next flight anywhere. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Now, this is also how Michael Jackson died and how Khan Noonien Singh almost destroyed the Enterprise multiple times. Am, <laughs> nerd. <laughs> am I, like, maybe I should be more impressed here, but am I wrong in thinking, like, oh, wow. NASA just invented the coma. <laughs> we am I sir? Am I missing something? Well, they said they do. They do something similar now in the medical field, but it's not for six months. It's for right. a, a short amount of time. Right. Uh, but they're basically studying: can you do this long term? I also it may, it raised a question in my head: is like, do you not shit anymore or pee or? Yeah, like, so this isn't. Yeah, it doesn't sound like you're they're just going on into auto s- colostomy bag or something. I don't know. I'm sure you have a cath. I'm sure they'd have a catheter. Yeah, I mean, I think the idea is like, it, it, like you're not you're not in stasis. They cool you down so much though, your body just slows down. Maybe you don't. You know, R- I, I don't know. So Still weird. six months, you got a shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you would think that you'd be backed up. I thought that sure. NASA NASA was trying to recruit people to possibly go to Mars. That. uh uh, were kind of older and or had like weren't gonna come back for the return trip like a what like, it was. like Ebola patients yeah well no <laughs> <laughs> I just look what, what kind of state of, you know what is the state of affairs of the United States when we are, we're competing with India to the race to Mars it's <laughs> like, it doesn't, like what's going on here right yeah uh, I don't know I, I I I do think it's interesting though I mean you're right in the sense that why can't they just knock us out for a plane flight? I mean, oh, you can, I'd love it. You can do that by decreasing cabin pressure, right? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I. I just. I. It's you know. It's worth the risk of maybe like falling into a coma and never waking up. <laughs> compared to like, are like you afraid of flying? Flight. I'm not because because I am. I am terrified. I'm of flying. not afraid of flying. I hate the experience of flying at all. I hate every single person in that plane. Yeah. I I I almost wish if it wasn't for me dying, I wish the plane would crash. That's how much <laughs> I hate wow. everybody on the plane. I hate it. I hate I like I I panic so badly on flights that I Mary always jokes that every time we travel anywhere in a plane, she ends up with a crushed hand because I just I have a total phobia of it, but it's not so bad that I'd prefer to drive my car for eighteen hours somewhere. Right. Like I still fly, but I usually try to enter a self induced coma with alcohol or something of that. Like I've found that in the Atlanta airport, if I just eat enough Nathan's famous chili dogs, I can get kind of close to a coma where I stop <laughs> caring whether I live or die and then I I'm I'm pretty fine, but it, it's uh, flying is not a good experience wait, for me. Wait, that's what you have to do to fly, because mm-hmm. like that just sounds like the way I live my life. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is like flying used to be like an experience people would look forward to. It's like, oh, we get to fly. They would dress up, you know, and it'd be a whole experience. There you used get to be that show Pan Am, and everyone's like, oh my god, I'm flying. Yeah. <laughs> you must be a senator or a spy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> like, now everyone's like, oh god, fucking damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, f- flying is. You're right, though. It is a horrible experience. Like, there's no good thing about being on an airplane other than it gets you somewhere faster. Everything else is awful. No, it's just like they try and cram as many people as they can into the plane. The small ass seats. You got the you got the reclining person in front of you. You know, and then it's like, oh well, if he's gonna recline, then I'll, it, can you call that reclining for one thing? <laughs> right. You know. 
But I, I just, it smells weird, you know? Yeah. There's just too many people in one plane. The whole experience, like, getting molested, you know, in order to get on the plane bothers me. This is also, I also factor flying under the category of things that no matter how many people tell me it's safer than driving, no matter how many statistics I see that prove to me how safe it is, you're never going to convince me that it's safe. Like, I always feel like we're going to crash and explode. It just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> just, That's part of the excitement, Jimmy. I can't get my brain around how these thousands of pounds of metal like can carry us all and... If There's almost no error. If you're error. like Josh, the turbulence is like, oh, at least all these people are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That sounds like a good place to end the Jimmy Curve today. Uh, can I just say, uh, I would like to volunteer uh, for a mission to Mars, assuming we're only taking one trip. I feel like this is the best chance I have. Uh, to not commit suicide, but, like, actually just have people celebrate my noble gift to society. So, if that's available. <laughs> that was a good time to play that drop. We had to... In, like, six months without eating, like, you'll survive. Right. <laughs> not without taking a shit. Are you calling Will a food camel? <laughs> <laughs> like I would assume you'd have to be pretty pretty hefty in order to last six months without eating. Uh, yeah, I mean it'd be a well if your body slowed. I don't. Know I how feel that like works. I've been building towards hibernation my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thanks a lot. We'd like to thank everybody for listening. Give us a retweet. Continue downloading. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, send us an email uh, for show topics at the Jimmy Curve at gmail.com. For example, uh, John Tom this week suggested a show topic, uh, Will Doherty's likely steroid-induced calf muscles. <laughs> Will, your response? Uh, his jealousy is so transparent, uh, it it's makes me sad, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> John Tom, keep reaching for the stars. Okay? <laughs> Don't give up. <laughs> uh, so, but just remember, as much better mm -hmm. as like as much better as my calves are than yours, I am still a thousand times more proficient at comedy. <laughs> oh, in man, guys, shit just got real. <laughs> Follow John Tom on Twitter at nineteen eighty star. Uh, yeah. All right. Hold on. Let's give, him, let's give him one of these. I didn't get that whole thing in there. It's fine. Whatever. We'll edit it out and post. Uh, so that's our show. Uh, follow us on Twitter at the Jimmy Curve. Uh, whatever. Join our Facebook page. I'm exhausted. Uh, for my co-hosts, I would, I would, I would oh, like ahead. to. I would also uh, like to thank our sponsor for today's oh, episode. That's right. Uh, the the new Taco Bell dollar menu. <laughs> that's right. Remember, less than one dollar for all the diarrhea you can eat. I do, I feel like uh, I feel like the Taco Bell dollar menu slogan should just be "Will loves you." <laughs> Will's always gonna love you. So for my co-hosts. Joshua Vossler. And Will Doherty. And our special guest. Ryan Dowd. <laughs> well, one more time with a little more energy. Ryan Dowd. Now angry. Makes you say Ryan Dowd. <laughs> now condescending. Ryan Dowd. <laughs> this has been your That was the first one. <laughs> <laughs> this is your host, Jimmy Putnam, saying thank you for listening. Good night. Good night.